we are talking about the doctrine of demon possession, obsession, and depression. And we uh, have gone through several passages already in talking about this, but uh, for those that uh, do keep notes, uh, again, we're going to just simply go through the definition and then uh, talk about the doctrine of reigns. These three words are important because they are three things that can happen to you potentially. If you are unsaved, there's a potential of being possessed of another entity. Uh, and there are those who think that um, uh, grace age believers, uh, excuse me, grace age people cannot be possessed. I do not feel that's true, and perhaps tonight we'll address that. But uh, if you're unsaved in whatever dispensation, except for the dispensation of the millennial kingdom, you can be possessed in the realm of your human spirit if you are not a believer. If you are a believer, however, you cannot be possessed of the demon, but you can be obsessed. Now, just as possession is in the realm of the conscience and human spirit, obsession is in the realm of your emotion and body. And it has to do with false images in your emotion and nervous energy through the old sin nature. It's called the flesh or the old man and so forth. We just call it OS and old sin nature. And then as a result, uh, depression can happen because there is a vacuum. And we'll see that in, before we're done with our study. It's called the matayotes in the Greek. Now, the vacuum can be in your human spirit. It can be in your conscience. It can be in the realm of the heart, which is this area of the soul, or the mind, which is this area of the soul. It can be in the soul itself because of lack of soulish energy reserves. It can be the emptiness of your emotions and lack of nervous energy in your body. So all of these things can happen to you. That's why this doctrine is so important. Now, what is demon possession? If you're an unbeliever, it's the fact that someone else is actually controlling you, holding on to uh, ownership of every faculty you have and occupies what's called their house or his house, and that is your human spirit. That is a potential. What is obsession? To become so preoccupied in your mind with something uh, to such an unusual degree that it consumes all of your time, all of your thinking, and so forth. Or it can even be this demon spirit putting into your mind an undesirable or unlawful thought. Now that brings us then to the definition of depression. Depression is a soulish matter. There can be mental and physiological problems related to this. You can just be disorganized and succumb to the fact that uh, you got so much to do you lose your nervous energy and fall apart. Well that happens. But for the most part, especially in this uh, time of the intensified stage of the angelic conflict, when you are possessed or obsessed, you usually become depressed. What is it? It means that you have a disfigured form in your soul. Your soul is drawn into the vacuum and therefore becomes um, distorted in that sense. It's displaced. Uh, uh, one part is out of sync or out of balance. As a result of trying to get back in balance, you lose your energy. And that's the second thing that causes depression. Diminished resources. You don't have enough strength to pull it back and so eventually you simply succumb to the vacuum and that is depression. And lastly, then you simply cannot function. Uh, you ha don't have focus, you don't have drive, uh, and so forth. And eventually, uh, you get um, uh, disoriented to life. Now, there are degrees to this, uh, as you well know. Now, the reason that we're in Isaiah chapter 11 is that before we move on into demon possession, we have to understand what they're after. In verse number five, it says, there are two potential things that they can be after. And in righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Therefore, there can be unrighteousness in the loins of his mind, and unfaithfulness in the reins of the soul. So therefore, that is their target. Now, 
We saw the last time that loins actually is the Hebrew mothane, and it means the center, where the four corners are gathered, tucked in to pr pr uh, protect the place of reproduction or what can be produced, and that's the human volition. And that's why they're after it. They want to manipulate you. They want to control your life, control your thinking. Now, you might say, well, yeah, that uh, the drug crowd, the dope crowd. Oh, no. What evil spirits do, especially in the dispensation of grace, is control your thinking toward one world government, one world religion, getting together apart from doctrine, uh, leaving God behind, refusing Christ as Savior, but being such a nice, sweet person that you can influence others. There are demon-possessed people, in my opinion, out there that are the most, the sweetest and nicest people that you would ever want to meet. I mean, you're impressed. There's something attractive. They've got a charisma about them. Oh, yeah. But it's beyond that person. It's, uh, it's called a demon. And they're trying to influence you. See, I, I don't have God, and I'm a success. You don't need God. You can do it. You can do it on your own. Positive thinking. And again, we feel that's nonsense. But they are after control of what the, the, you can potentially reproduce or produce in your mind. But reigns is different. It's kilia. And it is the apparatus which causes direction. And it's actually the same thing as uh, the, the bit and the bridle and the reins that go back to the man on uh, uh, the buckboard that's controlling the horse. Now you have reins, as we pointed out, from the emotion to the heart. This is the heart here, the right lobe of the soul. Or from the emotion to the mind. It's the left lobe of the soul. And then you have reins from the mind back to the conscience or from the heart back to the conscience. And of course, these four corners, it's all connected here through the loins or the volition of, of your soul. So if somebody has control of the reins, if there is a demon spirit here and has control of these reins, it can control you from the inside out. It can make you think and go into what direction it wants you to go and, and so forth. Uh, and then if you are obsessed, you have a demon spirit that is influencing your emotion and controlling it from the outside in, where it has your emotions grabbing a hold of your volition, making you think and do and say the things that you do. And again, all of what a demon spirit does is not bad in the sense of unsociable behavior, unlawful behavior. Evil is the philosophy of bringing the best out of life apart from God. So anytime you're unsaved or out of fellowship, you assume naturally an evil philosophy. You might try to compensate for that by uh, a scintillating personality. Hey, I'm so sweet. I treat people good and so forth. No, you're still evil. You must be saved and in fellowship or you succumb, as we taught in Sunday school, to that evil um, spirit. Okay, I'm going to ask you to turn... Uh, if you will, to the book of Jeremiah, first of all, and then we'll go to Matthew. But let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Now, the reason I, I took the, off the one picture there so as to allow those who do take uh, regular faithful notes to get these things down. But in verse number 10 of Jeremiah 17, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Now, the difference between the, the heart and the loins in this concept is that the heart includes all the faculties from the essence of the soul to the, uh, to the right lobe, to the left lobe, to the uh, emotion, back to the conscience. It includes everything involved in all of the faculties of the soul. The loins, basically just that one area that is the producer or reproducer of the soul. So here, rather than loins, God says, I, I search the heart, everything involved in your soul and I try the reins. Now that's why this doctrine is important. Who has control of your reins? This is, now I, I don't mean to liken you to an ox or a mule or a donkey, but basically that's the concept. Who has control of your reins? Uh, excuse the phrase, but who pulls your chain? 
Uh, who stops you up short? Who makes you go left or right? Who keeps you from going down the straight and narrow? Uh, who is it that's influencing your life more than God is influencing your life? He tries your heart. He takes a peek in there and he looks at every single faculty and then he says, let me test those reins. And he gives you a command and you take charge of your life and you do what God says. You're in full and complete control. Oh, uh, yes. But for those who are unsaved and out of fellowship, someone else potentially has charge from the inside out or from the outside in. You can be possessed, you can be obsessed. But then when your energy is depleted, you are depressed. And depression as we are defining it uh, is a result of demon influence. Matthew chapter nine. Now, there are two portions of Scripture that we will get through this morning. We'll come back and see some other Scriptures tonight with obsession and depression. So, we're just simply going to take our time and go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 32. As they went out... Behold, they brought to him a dumb man. It simply means that he could not speak. Someone, demon, it's called in the Hebrew, of, in the Greek, and gastomuthos. What are these demons? They are ventriloquist demons. We've studied them before. And they actually can take control of what's in your soul that controls your vocal cords. A lot of times that's why people speak in tongues. Um, heathen people speak in tongues, but they're demon-possessed. Who does the speaking? Who makes them say all that gibberish? Well, demons do. And in Gostromuthos means to be a ventriloquist. Only uh, <clears throat> if somebody is a ventriloquist de uh, uh, a demon inside of you, controlling whether you speak or not or what you say, what does that make the one that's possessed? A ventricular image. Or, in layman's term, a dummy. That's right. You big dummy. That's what you are. Now, you don't have to be, but that's what you are. Why? Because you're possessed. We all knew it. We all suspected it anyway. <laughs> Excuse me, I just had to say that. All right, verse 32. A dumb man possessed with a devil. Now, the, the word possessed, a big word in the Greek, but important. Diamonizomai. What does that mean? To be controlled. Somebody has the control of your reins. Now, in a moment, we're going to see why that's important because of the potential damage that can be done to your soul if they have control of your reins. It means to be driven. For example, if you've got a horse and you, <laughs> and, uh, you put him on one of those walkers that has a motor and automatically walks around, the minute that motor hits and pulls on the reins, what that horse have to do? He has to yield, and uh, as long as that motor is going around, that horse is going to walk and so forth. Uh, he's driven. Yeah, he's driven by those things. Um, you're going to be hurt if you don't. I'm going to dig that bit into the side of your mouth. If you don't move. So it also means to be not exorcised. That's something that Jesus is going to do here in a minute. But to be exorcised. To continue that, the activity up until you have no more energy. It comes from dio, meaning to share the treasure or the substance. Now, here's the concept. You get on the back of a, of a horse, you're on the saddle. What are you doing with that horse? You are sharing that horse's strength so that as long as you are on top of holding the reins, you can ride that horse to the ground, uh, basically. And that's, that's what it's talking about here. To be controlled, driven, exercised by a fallen being, to distribute the substance, the, the horse and the rider together. It's the person and the demon together, but the demon has the reins. Now, one more thing, two more things uh, uh, about this. It's in the present tense, which means it's a continued thing. Passive, it means that the demon did this on his own, and the person 
just simply is now under his control. He received it. That's the passive voice. Verse 33. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spirit spake, and multitudes marveled because they had never so seen it in Israel. Now let's turn to Mark chapter 9. Verse 14, he came down from the Mount of Transfiguration. This is the setting. There's a great multitude there, and all the people ran to him, verse 15, and greeted him. What's the question? Well, one of the multitude said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Now, note the change in wording. The demon actually has to do with the one in control. He is the one in his house. So we'll put demon here in in control, or I should put the D right there. The S should go here, because in the human spirit there is a vacuum. Now it's that vacuum that God the Holy Spirit regenerates and, uh, and fills up with himself and with your human spirit when you're saved. But if you are unsaved, there's still a vacuum. Well, who else can live there? Another spirit can live there. That's why there's a change. Not only is it showing that the man who, the one man had a dumb demon, which simply means he had control of the reins, this person took up a an abode in the other person. He's spirit, he's living in the realm of his human spirit where there is a vacuum. Now we have a distortion of the soul of the person and a demon living in the place of the vacuum. All right. It says, verse 18, wheresoever he taketh him. Now, Actually, there are several F words here, E-T-H. Taketh, teareth, foameth, gnasheth, and pineth. We're we're just going to look at two this morning, basically. What are these two? Teareth and pineth. Then there's another word in context we will share. The the first word, before we get into the Greek here with uh, the first Greek word, is taketh. Wheresoever he taketh him. Now what does this show? That someone else is in control of his life. You see, if you are possessed or obsessed with a demon, someone else is in control. And so therefore, you cannot necessarily do the, the things that you really want to do. Someone else is influencing you to think and say and do and act. Someone else is giving you your motivation and inspiration to live. Someone else is taking you on the journey of life, but they are enjoying it because they're in control. They're actually living out their life, their life's fantasies through you. Now, let's let's go back to, to our illustration here. They are actually living out their life's fantasies through you. A demon, if he is in your human spirit, will eventually take the charge of the reins of your soul. And if he is, say, a lustful demon, he will cause you to lust certain things in the realm of your emotion. Uh, if if uh, he is a greedy demon, he will live out his life. He wants more and more. And so therefore, he puts that in, in the realm of your soul. He's taking charge of, of the inside out. Um, he, he tells you what kind of occupation that you're supposed to have. He tells you where you're to go, the people to meet, the people you should call, cultivate, the things that you should say. Then on the other hand, you have those demons who want to get in but cannot. 
So they want to control the realm of your conscience. And so therefore, they start saying things from the outside in to harden your heart against God. Perhaps you're saved, but you're out of fellowship. They can still work your conscience. If you're motivated by guilt, if you're motivated by uh, uh, jealousy, uh, anything else um, uh, aside from being motivated from God, then uh, it's wrong. No matter if the, the outcome is correct, the process is wrong. Now that's the word or the concept, and it's the doctrine of reigns, possessed of demons, or whithersoever he taketh him. All right, now let's look at two words. Ridei orgia. It is the word tereth. Why bring out a word such as this? Because if somebody has control of your reins, they can hurt you. They can put a sore on your soul. Now, what happens when somebody has control of the reins of a horse and he's a novice, say, or just mean, and he wants to go a certain direction, that horse is a little stubborn, and they just get up on those stirrups and stand up with all their might, they just yank on those things, and the bit comes right down. That steel hits the soft gum of, of the horse, and what happens to the gum? Well, it tears. Uh, the, the gum is going to yield to the strength of, the, of that bit, or pulling it down so that it tears the corner of the mouth. You see, well, your soul has substance. You might not be able to see it, but it has an apparatus called a rain. In fact, it has four of them from the outside in, from the inside out. You control them for the most part, but you can be controlled by another. And if that other person is mean, he can depress you by tearing you, causing a gap in your soul, causing a dig there and pain. And that's what it means. To force, especially in a delicate or sensitive area, without regard to the consequences. What does he care if it's your pain? All he has to do is leave you to suffer the consequences. He'll find another stooge to uh, possess. And that's what, that is what's happening here. Or he will simply uh, go back into the resources of the human spirit, allow you to recover, as evidently he was allowing this guy to do, this young kid, um, to recover, and uh, then simply do it to him again. He tore his soul. Irresponsible, negligent in directing the object for his own pleasure. When the object got a little stubborn, he simply dug in the spurs and dug in the bit in the mouth. All right. Now, here is the next word we want to see, and it is the word for depression. Fometh and dasheth hath to do with the convulsions of the body because it is, it is so tired, and there are spasms of the muscles. There's no nervous energy for any normal type of living, but yet he's still alive, and so he simply convulses there and foams at the mouth. Uh, there is practically no consciousness because this demon spirit is taking full charge. And so therefore, he so succumbed to this demon spirit that the Bible says he pined away. Zereno. Now, what does Zireno mean? It means to dehydrate, to remove the water. Now, what happens when you dehydrate something? You reduce it down to its most basic element, but there's the op uh, operative word. You reduce, you cause a depression, you have a lessening uh, effect. And that's what it means, to depress by removing the substance. What was the substance? Soul energy. Emotional energy, which is basically nervous energy. Why are you driven to do the things that you do? Who is in charge of your life? Why do you work and work and work and work and then all of a sudden come up today and just boom, I just can't go anymore. Are you doing too much? Why are you doing too much? Um, what is more important than organizing your life so that you can come to church, learn the word and uh, uh, be in, be in a, um, a coherent mind, everything together. You pine away. Now that is depression. Now what is the upshot of this teaching for a worldly person? Simply this. As long as someone else is in control of your life and it's not God, 
you are going to stay in a de depressed state. You're going to be a manic depressive. What's a manic depressive? They get high one time and low the next. High one time and low the next. Something good's going to happen to you apart from God, and you're going to be so happy. But then all of a sudden that's going to be removed, and you're going to be so depressed. Or the demon spirit is going to lust through you and uh, want something, and all of a sudden the circumstances of life are going to remove that person or thing from you. And you know what's going to happen to you? It's going to cause a depression. There's an emptiness in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body now. It's gone. So you have to just take that time and rest. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that there are normal rest times and that sometimes through work and, and age. Uh, we were talking about age here uh, this morning and, and forgetfulness. Uh, was, I, was, I ran down to um, wash my hands just before the service. Uh, and uh, as I ran down there, I, I noticed uh, some, someone getting up from the floor of the nursery, <laughs> Nancy. She put her hand on her knee, and she was getting up oh so slow. And I said, uh, getting up kind of slow there, aren't you? She stuck her head out the nursery door and looked at me this way. and said, well, you're supposed to be in church. You get up there and start the service. She was kind of scolding me. But, um, th you know, as we're aging, we can't do as much as we used to, even though we think we can, or at least uh, we think we remember what we used to do, whatever. But uh, I'm not talking about those issues. I'm talking about the fact that in today's society, people are driven. They're driven. Our kids are driven. Our kids are having nervous breakdowns. Our, our, our kids are having to go to secular uh, mental places in order to glean help uh, for, for abnormal lives because we've got to compete on a world. Who's causing this competition globally that we have to bring this great society into the world apart from God where men are the saviors of other men, where men are the saviors of the environment, where men are the saviors of society and one another. Who's causing this competition for better technology, a machine planet where people are taken care of equally? Demons are. Millions and millions of demons in, in, a, in a mass telepathic attempt or, or a possessive attempt to control men. But the problem is, is that they have more power than men, and men give out because of the weakened physical condition, and then what happens to men? They pine away. They get depressed because they have no resources to keep going on. Now, there's another word that we want to see here, and it's down in verse 26. Jesus Christ is asking the demon to leave his home. He's evicting him from the human spirit or the chamber, what should contain the human spirit of this young man. I charge you, deaf spirit, and he addressed both the spirit and the place where he was to come out of him and enter no more into him. Now, we'll talk about that this tonight, too. That's very important, because if the Spirit goes out and you still are unsaved, you know what the Spirit can do? He can come right back in. There's no, there's no one's going to stop him. The Spirit cried and rent him sore. Picture. Greek word, sparaso to convulse or literally to rend as you're tearing a cloth. You grab a cloth and you tear it. But now here's the picture. Jesus Christ is casting this demon out, but where does the demon have his hands? On the reins. Uh, if, a, if a man were suddenly caught up in a whirlwind and the horse is down there and, he, and he's up and he still has his hands on the rein, what's going to happen to the horse? <coughs> he's, he's going to be torn, you see. Uh, his teeth are going to be broken. His gums are going to be uh, 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 ab absolutely uh, um, lacerated. His, his, his mouth will be distorted because the man wants on the ground and he still wants down there where he should be. That's his home, the earth. But the whirlwind's pulling him up and his only connection is the reins. He's got the reins. So the, so the horse would begin to convulse. It's hurting me. It's hurting me. He starts kicking and so forth. And the man's still got a hold until finally that the man lets go and then the pressure is relieved on the horse. And that's 
this concept. He didn't want to let go of the reins of another person's life. Demon spirits want to live out their lives in people and control them. And unless people get saved and stay in fellowship, there are three things that are, that are potential for them. One possession, the other obsession, and as a result of either or or both, depression. Psychologists, psychiatrists, mental health clinics, all the medicines in the world will not cure this problem. Now, don't, there shouldn't be somebody who said, well, is he saying don't go to, if you need help, <laughs> by all means, go. But most of your problem, I guarantee you, 99.9% .9 of your problem uh, is related in one way or the other to the angelic conflict and the fact that someone else is trying to take control of your life. And if it's God, you're saying, no, God. If it's, if it's a demon, you are slowly but surely yielding over control of your life to that fallen being. 